want to say thank you to our sponsors, Watchman Cigars, Red Hill Brewing, Crave Bath and Body, and Level Up Logo. Without you guys, this episode would not be possible. Uh, again, it is it's getting nice outside, getting ready to have family reunions, the the family cruise. Um, maybe you also need ball caps. Maybe you you're getting ready for baseball season. Need some unis. Those type of things. Hit my man Eric up at leveluplogo.com. You can he can get you anything you need. So like the bags that you carry all that stuff in, the duffels with your team logo. Imagine it. Team logo on there. Just looks sharp and crisp. You're gonna do it for the kids. Imagine their faces when they pull out these duffels and they're beautiful with their names and logos and all that stuff on it. Hit up my man Eric. He can hook you up. Leveluplogo.com. All right. Who did that one? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome <laughs> to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where it's our take on life, liberty, and the pursuit of gravy. And you, the listener, are invited to come up on the front porch, grab a beverage, and set a spell. We've got a great show lined up for you, as always. But bef- without any delay or any doubt, let's bring on our starting lineup. We're going to first go to Magic Man. Hey, everybody. How's it going? And then we've got producer Brian. Hey, hey, hey. Aaron uh, may be joining us shortly. Who knows? We think she went AWOL, but she may be just trying to go grab a fish sandwich. Mm. Uh, But she might be back. Uh, And then, of course, I be your illustrious host, Biggin. And how about you? Uh, producer Brian, where can our folks find us on those socials, on the interwebs, wherever oh, we the dark web, <clears throat> in- dark web, in- right? Uh, well, we have a brand new website, new as in new for in, this year yeah. at sfpradio.com. Um, we got some serious latency happening tonight, so hopefully we don't talk of each other too much. But the website uh, has our Twitters, our YouTubes, our Instagrams, our uh, TikToks, our Facebooks, our uh, WhatsApps, our WhatsApps, our uh, Venmos, all the things over there, right? Yep. <laughs> And we also make sure you check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Southern Fried Philosophy. Uh, we're, I haven't looked, checked the stats recently, but there's a great video of there, how to make business and gravy with mm-hmm. the one and only Bearded Home Cook. Absolutely. Um, we have started a series called uh, in, the Deconst- uh, in the Pursuit of Deconstructing the Church. Our guest tonight uh, had family situation, so he was not able to join. So now we're starting a new series called In the Pursuit of We Don't Have Any Guests. So (laughs) how about that? The next, I think, three weeks, we are uh, just flying solo at this point. I'm going to try to do my best to to book some folks. But uh, in this case, In the Pursuit of Guests We Don't Have. If you want to be on the show, (laughs) what was that? The pursuit of content, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be on the show, just email me at SFP Radio. And shout out to our listeners from the state of Mississippi. Ryan, can you give us some facts about Mississippi? Sure thing. Uh, in fact, I am in the state of Mississippi for the next uh, week or so. Um, but anyways, uh, we uh, and I, I do have an interesting story, uh, which we'll, we'll get to here in a little bit. But first of all, let's talk about facts about Mississippi. Uh, first thing, root beer was originally created in Biloxi, Mississippi in 1898. So for those of you that are fans of root beer, you can thank uh, Biloxi for uh, bringing that about. And the folks that lived there was, was the in the year name, 1898. Was the original name Sassafras? Good question. I don't know. I don't know. I think those are different. Mm. All right. So during the show, uh, Ryan, I need you to tell me the difference between Sassafras and root beer. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll uh, I'll see if I can look that well, up there for you. Was that? That's oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Sasper, yeah, sarsaparilla was uh, isn't that an alcoholic drink? Like back in the mm. uh, you know, uh, old west days. Hey, bartender, give me some sarsaparilla. <laughs> 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 
Okay. And we've already got our show note, our show title. Yeah. <laughs> to give us a yeah. yeah, there you go. All right. Um, here's something pretty cool. The very first heart and lung transplants were successfully performed in the state. They were performed in 1963 and 1964. So, um, mm. hey, our uh, our friend uh, Mojo uh, can thank the state of Mississippi with his uh, his his heart transplant he had for pioneering, absolutely, <laughs> or pioneering. Yeah, let's try it out here yeah, first. Pioneering that. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of, it is it's, his six year heart anniversary. Oh wow, that's amazing! Fantastic! Yeah, there we go. Um, speaking of latency in the in the uh, internet connection, there that that uh, applause kind of came across like a toilet flushing for a second there. So oh, just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> um, all right, <laughs> yeah. Um, the term teddy bear originated from a 1902 mm. hunting trip in Mississippi by none other than uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Yep. Our I actually president. knew that. I knew that too. Yeah. Um, here's a, I've got uh, two more little facts here, and these are actually kind of uh, some funny laws that they have here. If you are tired of your disobedient children, move them to Mississippi. Mm. The next time they fail to obey, you'll be legally supported in shaving off their hair. <laughs> it's not so bad. It worked for Brian. It's I guess so it bad. probably won't, won't really do much, but do that to a teenager and they'll freak out, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the last, uh, head. Wow. last thing I have here is if you wear false teeth, keep them in your mouth when you dine out. Mississippi law forbids throwing dentures at others in the restaurant. So watch out for those flying teeth. Mm. Wow. Okay. I had a, a youth pist- pastor friend of mine, pistol friend what? and pastor friend. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and he, I mean, he, dude was fantastic. Um, but he would always take his false teeth out and then just put them in the glass of some youth that's close by while they're all out <laughs> eating. <laughs> and they pick up their glass and, ah, you know, freak out. It was a great, it was a great prank that he would do. It was fantastic. So, well, thank you, Magic Man. You said you had an interesting story yeah. about the M I S S I S S I S S I S S I P P I. I do. So, uh, this is, uh, I guess we'll go into our um, How You Be Durin segment here, huh? All right. Let's do it. Brought to you by Crave Bath and All Body right. Works. Hey, if you smell bad, right. use that. <laughs> That's right. You got the stank stank on you. There's your tagline right there. If you smell bad, use this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's free. Hey, you smell this. For that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, All right. Um, so, what was I going to say? So, um, we're still in the uh, town of, of uh, I forgot what town we're in. Anyways, we're, we're this east of, well. we're east of Tupelo. And, uh, and uh day before yesterday we had uh some rather uh strong storms come through. Uh these are the same storms that had that came through Texas and produced tornadoes. So there's that one video of that uh truck that was rolled on its side, spun around and then flipped back on its wheels oh, yeah. and drove off. And then the other there's another tornado evidently that came through New Orleans uh lower ninth ward and went over into the next parish. This is the same storm system. Mm. So anyways, uh about um, I don't know three three fifteen or so Central Time. Um, I'm sitting here working, and all of a sudden, these uh, sirens go off. And at first, it's like, "What the heck's going on?" Then it was like, "Oh crap! That's a tornado siren. We need to get out of here." So uh, oh, crap. we I see jump the up wind. and. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, look at that, y'all! Holy cow! There it is, right there. That's a tornado. Hey, how did you get that recording of my wife? Man, that's impressive. <laughs> so, I'm a professional. Anyways, no. <laughs> yeah. No, she so she jumps up and uh and uh and I I jump up, grab, you know, put the dog on the leash. We run out to the truck. Big dookie. Uh, out of the campground. Um yeah, it was uh 
we booked it. I uh, went to a high spot so I could kind of look around and make sure it wasn't anywhere near us. And we, we looked on our phones to see where the uh, tornado was. And it was probably about um, the track had it going or the warning box was probably about a half mile to a mile east of us. Um, and we found out the shelter there's at the, uh, the uh, county courthouse. So we went over there, parked in the parking lot, stayed out there um, until the tornado passed or until the uh, tornado warning was over and then went back to the campground. So fortunately we didn't see the tornado. Uh, nothing happened. It was just a rather scary experience. Part of the, uh, uh, part of the adventure of, of uh, full-time RV living, I guess. Mm. Do you, when just normally, do you disconnect the truck or do you, is it always usually attached to the RV? It's disconnected. Yeah. So we, okay. we get into a campsite and we park the RV, disconnect the, the hitch, and then level the RV. Um, gotcha. So that, because we use the truck to, to get around and do errands and go visit places, et cetera. Sure. Did, is yeah, this so the we, second run in with tornado sirens? Um, yeah, I guess technically, yes. Um, uh, the first one was in Huntsville, which was the last place we were at, but they were just uh-huh. testing them there because it was a clear, beautiful okay. day, not a cloud in the sky, <laughs> sunny, and they were testing gotcha. them. But, um, uh, again, this was, you know, right after the Ukrainian invasion by Russia and, um, they were <laughs> testing, I guess, munitions or something at that arsenal. So we heard these loud booms and then the tornado sirens go off so it was like oh lord <laughs> are we getting They're ready rain. to get nuked or something yeah exactly They're, i mean so yeah it's impeccable yeah wow. yeah so um but this time yeah it was it was definitely a, a tornado and i'll tell you you know we don't have tornado sirens in the charlotte area really um they've got those sirens by the nuclear plants yeah they got the nuclear but, siren yeah I hear yeah those. but they don't have it for for tornadoes so you know whenever we've had the few times that we've had tornadic activity um, in the past, then, you know, it's no sirens that go off. So, oh. so this was, it was kind of eerie. And of course, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is the movie Twister. So, yeah. You know, sure. and, and we are diet, we are driving a Dodge Ram. So that's right. You know. And that's good. Yeah. yeah. Dorothy in the back. The Dorothy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Toto. Got to rename the dog Toto. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which one? Which one would you be? Uh, so, out of the three of us, who's who's the cowardly lion? Oh, that who's um, the tin man, and then who's scarecrow? Ooh, I think we all look like the lion. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's a mm. I've, I've never put myself into any of those shoes before. Mm. Yeah, I would. Ooh. That the scarecrow didn't have a heart, right? Brain. A, a brain. Brain. So that'd be me. The tin that'd man didn't me. have a heart. Or, Just, I mean, oh, that's probably me. That's not, yeah, that's you. <laughs> so I guess that and makes then, me the lion. <clears throat> well, you be heartless scared. or You're brainless are your other choices. <laughs> Yeah, which yeah, one would you I, rather I be? Courage. Hey, the way the way I was hauling butt out of this campground, I was definitely lacking right. courage. So you know. All right, so you're the cowardly lion, and I'll I'll take the scarecrow. Got it. All right, just and then of course, uh, Aaron would be Dorothy. I mean, of course, duh, that's a given. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. it. Nailed it, Priester Brian. How you be doing? <sighs> I just made it, barely made it here tonight. So it's it's glad to be here. Um, you know, I do have oh no something strange happen. We might talk about dreams here in a little bit, but the okay. other night, I think I thought I was like half asleep, and I thought I felt something like crawling across my arm. You know, so I was like you know, so mm-hmm. like swatted, and then I felt oh, it no. in another place yep. on my arm. So I swatted again, and then like I'm half asleep, going, "Was that a spider? Like, what, what was going on here? Am I imagining things? Oh, no. Is the fan like?" So this morning, this was like two nights ago, I noticed like my ankles really, really itchy, like Uh a painful kind of itchy, right? I have this massive bump on the back of my Achilles, like on my heel. I don't know if it's the location that makes it feel that way, but it's terrible. (laughs) Just thinking about me. me Oh my gosh. But you ever like... Ever have like wake up feel like you have things like crawling all over you? Is that a normal thing for anybody else? 
Yeah. No, it, I, I have that often. Usually yeah, it's I've me pooping it. the bed because I can't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Glad you, man. Um, I remember one time I was, I was 12 years old and woke up and like my arm was paralyzed. Like I, I couldn't move it. What? And I had, I had just watched this show that was talking about like demon possession and how, you know, evil spirits holding your, <laughs> your limbs down to your side. You know, you're 12 years old and, and sure. I, I was freaking out. You know, it must have been, I don't know, midnight, one o'clock when this happened. Oh, yeah. man. And I was sitting there in my bed freaking out. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Wow. What what was it? You just slept on it wrong? I, I probably slept on it wrong or something. Mm-hmm. Um, after a little while, you know, I was able to kind of get it to wiggle and, you know, I was all right. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's interesting how things you watch on TV, if something happens right after doing that, you, your mind tends to go places. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I don't know if it could be related well, to that uh, that image that uh, Biggin sent me the other day. It was a picture of Spider Man he found on TikTok. So maybe that has something <laughs> to do with my ankle injury. Uh, that could be it. <laughs> Didn't you also have a an old man ninja kick this week? That was last week. Did I not talk oh, okay. about that? I don't think you did. Well, I was going to send an audition tape in to be Jackie Chan's stunt double. I forgot to record it. American Ninja Warrior. I forgot to record it. Um, <laughs> essentially, I was playing with my kids, first of all, like running around back and forth. And there's this, there, in my house, there's a spot, like there's a garage door next to like a powder room door. And then there's another like wall where the refrigerator is. It's probably a two and a half foot square area. So I was like running through there and kind of hiding from my kids. Well, I managed to like slip right there and I did like a twisting roundhouse mm-hmm. kick and my head hit one wall, my knee hit a door, <laughs> my toes went through the powder room door and knocked the door completely off the hinges, like ripped the screws out of the door. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I was laying there and I'm hurting in like five different places and I'm trying to figure out which one's oh. broke. So I landed on like... The like the hip, right hip, and I hit the the garage door mm-hmm. hard enough. I was wearing jeans, and there's a blue streak down the door from my jeans rubbing. Like the dye came off my pants onto the white door. Um, but everything's okay. I was a little bruised and banged up, and my toes weren't broken, which I was kind That's of afraid. For. Got the door fixed. Uh, it was exciting. It was exciting. Uh, <laughs> half a point. second there. There you go. Yeah, it was great. So I never forget it. What did Marlene say? But there's no permanent damage <laughs> to you or the house. Uh, nothing. Nothing that I can tell yet. Everything. I'm, I'm pretty healed up now. <laughs> got the door. Uh, yeah, I had to put in. You had to like put new screws, or I had to putty the holes in the door and drill. You pilot mm. holes and put screws in. So, uh, yeah, that's fun. It's great. Good time. I, but I told you it made me feel like yeah. a young man because they didn't they didn't put me in the hospital for it. I didn't break a hip. <laughs> Walked away. You know you're still young when you fall down and you haven't broken a broken a hip yet. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, you got all, uh, a week ago from today. Um, I was watching was doing the show and then watching mm. Kentucky basketball. Um, you know, it was first half. wasn't too nervous. And the show kept going. We had about six minutes left. And I think we were down at three. No big deal. We're Kentucky. We're a number two seed. And then uh, they're a 15 seed. No big deal. Right. So I quickly get off the, the show, go watch it, thinking, hey, we've got this. We can pull this one out. <clears throat> Oh no, my friends, another year down the drain where we are out of the tournament. Um, and this time the worst loss in probably the history of the show. So to all big blue nation, we'll mourn, we'll cry, but we'll heal and we'll come back. We'll be stronger than ever. Maybe. 
Maybe. Maybe. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I was very upset. There was there was weeping and gnashing of teeth for several, I don't know, hours. Uh, I told producer Brian I'm taking Monday as a day or Friday as a day of bereavement and mourning, and then I'll be back and ready to go. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. We'll move on. We have roughly 160 days till football. So <laughs> there's always a bright point. <laughs> Oh. The University of Kentucky, known as the football school now. Way to go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our Southern phrase of the week is nervous as a cat in a room full of rockers. Uh, you may know, uh, you may have heard that. I was also as nervous as a cat in a room full of rockers during the game. Basically, when Southerners are explaining a person that is nervous, sometimes using reference to someone going to church after they've had a really rough weekend. So. No. Yeah, you guys heard that that phrase before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure Basically, I've heard it in conversation. I've heard the phrase, oh, really, but I don't know that I've heard anyone like I know just spit that out. Mm. <laughs> hmm. I I have heard it in context and in conversation. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. All right, uh, gentlemen. Let me. Uh, I, I need your all's help. I need the help of Southern Fried listeners. Um, to help us in a discussion, a discussion that my wife and I had <clears throat> about stoplights. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> let me pull this up here. When when you guys see a yellow light, and we'll say maybe 15, 20 yards ahead of you, you see it, it turn yellow. What's your normal go to reaction at this point? Oh, that's really tough. Is there any cars in front of me? There's no, there's no cars ahead of you. There's no cars behind you. Um, but uh, what what do you normally do in that situation? It depends on how fast I'm going. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Usually, we'll say, I'll, I'll we'll take my foot off the gas and then I make a decision. <laughs> For okay. Mm-hmm. Again, it's it really it's a day by day. Okay. It's not a so it's not I don't have instantaneous. A, it's not instant. I take my foot off the gas, and then it either goes back on the gas really hard, or on the brake really hard. So, okay, situational. Um, Magic man, what do you do with uh, with Big Dookie? Well. Big Dookie doesn't have the pick up and go that uh, grandma, that uh, grand marquee I had. <laughs> so, so usually I'll, I'll have to make sure I slow down. Actually, I did have a situation. It was on the way here, as a matter of fact, from Huntsville. Uh, I had the, the RV hooked up to the back and we were coming down the, the road and the light turned red uh, and had to hit the brakes. And surprisingly, we stopped oh. rather, rather quickly. Um, uh, so trailer brakes for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trailer brakes and and of course I've got the exhaust brake and uh the whole you know all that stuff on there. So but it it, mm. it did pretty good. I was rather surprised. I was afraid I was gonna like roll through the intersection, but it it stopped. But um n- normally when I was like commuting to work or something, if it turned yellow, I would usually I would try to make it through it if I could. Okay. Um unless I was just so far back then I would stop. Sure. I think right. the vehicle I'm driving also depends a lot. Like if I if I'm driving our mm-hmm. minivan, I'm more likely to stop because it's a lighter vehicle. Mm. If my truck, I don't want to like hit the brakes real hard because I'm just probably right. just gonna, yeah. I'm more likely That's to run true. through. You know. Okay. Is it? Let me ask this question then. Uh, is it illegal if you see it yellow and you cross the line, you know, the little white line, and it's still yellow? Is that illegal to go through or is it uh are you running a red light that depends on if there's a police officer watching or not red light uh, <laughs> when you pass through and you're overhead and it's red have you have you ran a red light or did you just make it so that's the argument that my wife and i are having if if you're if you're in the intersection and it turns red Mm-hmm. If you've already crossed over that line, then you you need to clear the intersection. But I mean, if you enter the intersection after it turns red, then you're that's illegal. But if you're in the intersection, I 
as it's yellow and then, you know, let's set straight, right? Hmm. It's, it's like a shot clock, right? Brian, what, that- you're talking about if you're going straight or if you're making a turn. No, you're just going straight. You're just going straight. Okay. So, because, you know, if you turn, usually you'll stop and wait for the traffic to pass right. and then finish your turn through the intersection. If you- So, yeah, just um, it, as long as you're in the intersection when it's red, then you're okay. Okay, so you're in the intersection, it's red, you're good. Yeah. He said if it turns red while you're in the intersection. Yeah. Like if you're all the way yeah, through. If you're, right? Yeah. Yes. So if it's red before you cross that imaginary line, I think that's where the problem or that's where the legality comes into question. All right. But we yeah. have, uh, so the situation was my wife, I've, I did that like three times coming home the other night. My wife is screaming, you ran a red light. <laughs> I was like, no, I didn't run a red light. It was red when I went under it, but it wasn't red when I crossed the line. And she kept arguing. And I was like, no, just Google it. So in fact, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you may cool. not say this is, is an educational show, but let me tell you, it is indeed. Uh, there are two rules. There is a permissive rule and a restrictive rule. In a permissive state, a driver can enter the intersection through the yellow light cycle, and a restrictive straight, uh, res- restrictive state law requires the driver to stop whenever safely possible. So if you run through it, if there's no car behind you, then it's illegal. Uh, North Carolina, you may ask yourself, well, what is it? It is indeed one of four permissive states. Huh. So I was not in the wrong on that one. I'm pretty sure Charlotte's extra permissive because usually I'll be in this situation <laughs> right. and then the person behind me keeps coming also. Like I borderline ran the red light. The two people behind me definitely ran the red light. <laughs> And that's the yes, truth. Absolutely. I got so mad the other day when that happened. I can give you one, but not like seven, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know. So uh thought that was pretty interesting. All right. So we have uh we again we've we've updated our SFP radio.com website on the website. Uh we have a cool feature that allows you to leave a voicemail. And um you know, anybody can, can go on the website. They can leave a voicemail. They can say whatever they want to say. And this week we had a, a fan of the show, a friend of mine, leave a voicemail. Uh, evidently, we are uh, dream interpreters. Mm-hmm. So we will put on our dream interpreter hat. We will pray to God to give us and reveal us what this dream means. And uh, we'll go from there. So producer Brian... Play the voice. Yeah, I forgot to rewind the tape. That's what happened here. I wasn't kind. I didn't rewind. So, yeah, I was really hoping (laughs) Erin would be here for this so she could help understand some of the words he says. But we'll see what happens. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Uh, It starts off a little loud. So we we advised. Howdy. This is Sketch from uh, Cut and Shoot, Texas. So I had a weird dream the other night. Need your help interpreting. I got invited to this Art Basel event in Miami. It's kind of a big deal. All kinds of weird people there. Christian hip-hop rapper, poet, propagandist, bartending. Houston rap legend Bun B's in the house. Uh, Black Panther star Letitia Wright is there with her twin sisters. I don't even know she has twin sisters. They're fighting with some TikTok people. Um, And I get seated next to Tim McGraw and his wife. Um, I'm trying to make small talk. I ask them if they even know what the event's about. They admit to me they're only there because their publicist told them to be so. Afterwards, I get up and ask for a photo as we're doing the Christian side hug pose. I tell them I'm going to make my friend Shelly so jealous. She's a huge Amy Grant fan. Yo, I, y'all, I, I thought Faith Hill was Amy Grant for this entire time. Yeah. I have no idea what this means and need your help interpreting. Thanks. <laughs> I think mm. we could be here all night unpacking wow. this, right? I mean, yeah. I think I, we could be here all night for me to understand who the first like 10 people are. I don't, I don't know any of those folks. 
That's true. There's, there's just like, what kind of life is he living that he's having dreams about this sort of thing, right? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> right. What show was he watching before? Or he went to bed. I need to know. I need to be eight before he went to bed. Yeah. What's the Tim um, Grawl Christian yeah, hip hop connection? time before or after? I don't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't understand any of that. Um, Ryan, do you have any thoughts? Do you have? Do you want to look into your crystal ball and try to figure out what what this means? What was he drinking or smoking? Mm, mm. That's a good call. We need to know was there. <laughs> Don't what, eat the worm. What was in his system at the time? Mind altering so, substances he, contained. <laughs> right. Um, I, I mean, I know that Sketch is a huge hip hop fan. So, I mean, hip hop's always on his brain, right? So, uh, and Houston's always on his brain because he's he's in Houston. So we can we can gather that there is some um, some hometown love. And some of the things that he he enjoys, right? I think going to an award show, uh, you probably feel uh, you feel like proud. Uh, you feel like, ooh, I'm like influ- I'm an influencer. Mm-hmm. Um, feel uh, like something new is is happening. This is an aspirational uh, dream. You think? Mm, maybe. Is so where he, wants got- his, he wants his podcast to go be at an award ceremony. For like, I forget oh, yeah. what the ceremony it was, or was it a? Oh, I have to play it back again. I don't know. We, we'll probably have to rewind, rewind that tape. Um, but by the way, um, so this is this is a side note. So when I when I was in Houston, uh, producer or sketch was our producer for the Doctor Dave and Biggin show. And just a side note, he got us tickets or got us in to be the media at this uh, hip hop concert. Uh, there's big, big hip hop um, award show, mm-hmm. and so we got to go to an award show as Dr. Dave and Biggin, and and so we would uh, we would interview some of the, the the rappers that were going through. And again, I was so out of my element; it was ridiculous. Uh, but then we asked them uh, the question and played the game: World of Warcraft character uh, or rapper? <laughs> and uh, and boy, we had a good time with that. <clears throat> That was that was that was, that was nice. a fun experience there. Oh, I love those games. Um, yeah. So, uh, so okay. So he's he's home. He's excited. Uh, something new. I mean, he recently got married. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and you said what kind of award show is it? You think? Yeah, I'm going to play the first half of this because I forgot. All right, here missed- we go. Let's try to figure right. this out. Howdy, this is Sketch from uh, Cut and Shoot, Texas. So I had a weird dream the other night. Need your help interpreting. I got invited to this Art Basil event in Miami. It's kind of Art Basil. Art Basil in Miami. It's not even in Houston, but all these Houston people are in Miami. All right. Ooh, that's a good. That's a good catch. My so he's out of his element, Mm -hmm. but there's still some familiarity out of his element. Okay. Okay. Kind of a big deal. All kinds of weird people there. Christian hip hop rapper, poet, propagandist, bartending, Houston rap legend Bun right. B's in the How's house. It? So we have a Christian rapper bartending. His name's Propaganda, if that matters. Yeah. I, ooh. So maybe you're breaking out of a stereotype. Uh, Houston rap there's another yeah. Houston rap legend cool. Bun B's in the house. Uh, Black Panther star Leticia Wright is there. Okay, so now we're getting into movies. Yeah, that's the. Uh, I'm assuming he's being the Marvel Black Panther. Right. Yeah. Uh, and she has twin sisters. Did the twin si- Is oh, that is also, that for real? Is that a real thing? I is- also know that he recently came back watching Hamilton. So three sisters could be part of Hamilton. Uh, so there may be some uh, residual on that one. Okay. All right. We got that. We got that figured out. All right. Then what else we got? Got to rewind the tape. Yeah. I'm double checking here. Okay. Oh, does, if she has twin sisters. Yeah. They're not say. I think that's made up. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. 
Uh oh. She's in a. <sighs> she's set to play a twin in a movie. Oh. He's for. He knew this already. Well, he maybe this happened this like two years ago. So maybe he watched that. Oh. <laughs> So we're still back at movies and okay. Hamilton. All right. Yeah. All so right. that happened. All right. Well, let's, let's keep moving here. With her twin sisters. I don't even know she has twin sisters. They're fighting with some TikTok people. Um, oh, and I get seated next to Tim McGraw yeah. and his wife. Wait a minute. Does she have her sisters or twins? Maybe that's what I said. Well, I don't know. They're fighting with Taylor. So, well, we'll just move on. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. They fought TikTok people. Um, I'm trying to make small talk. I ask him if they even Tim know. McGraw what the event's about. Mm-hmm. They admit to me they're only there because their publicist told them to be so. Yeah, so That's Tim McGraw the and then Sketch doesn't know who his wife really is. He thinks it's Amy Grant. Amy Grant, right? That's right? Kind of supposed to be Faith Hill. Yeah. Is, that, is that right? Yeah. yeah. That's who he's hey, Faith Hill's wife. Yeah. I knew a thing. Yeah. Way to go, pop culture. There's some mistaken identity happening here. <laughs> Yeah. So what I want after we kind of get this done, uh, we'll go through. Amy Grant is, have is married to Vince Gill. A, a scenario or what we an interpretation. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So each of us will give us a prediction of what that what that means, what the dream means. <clears throat> All right. So Tim McGraw is married to Faith Hill, but he thinks that it's Amy Grant, uh, and then, uh, but he's actually married to Faith Hill. Faith, uh, Amy Grant is married to Vince Gill, so there's a con- country connection there. Mm. Mm. It's country Christian rap. Miami. Worlds colliding. All those things don't go together, right? <laughs> That's right. Maybe Miami and rap, but not Miami and country. <laughs> okay. All right. Anybody have any guesses? Ryan? Out of this dream, what do you think it means? Hmm. He likes twins that sing country music and have <laughs> rap in it. I, I don't know. All right. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> There's your diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Producer Brian, what are are your thoughts? I I think it means that next time you say no to the gas station egg salad sandwich on your way home. That's what I think it means. Mm. Mine's very close. I thought that just gave you gas. I think it's very clear. (laughs) I think it's very clear to what this dream means is they will be having tacos for dinner on Friday. Mm, That's got to be it. Yeah, that's it. There you go. It's tacos. There it is. Perfect. There, there's our dream interpretations. If you would like us to interpret your dream, interpret your dream. Please. Uh, go to sfpradio.com. We, we obviously love this and we're great at it. Uh, go to sfpradio.com, leave a voicemail, and we will be glad to interpret your dream free of charge. All right. So <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> The moment you guys have all been waiting for is our fish sandwich bracket. Oh, yes. Producer Brian, kick off that music. Yes. I got to find it. Hold on. (laughs) (laughs) I'm the reason the whole world love it. Now I got to crush it. Vallejo fishes. Then you should be disgusted. How dare you sell a square fish asking us to trust it? A half slice of cheese, Mickey D's on a budget. Arby's crispy fish is simply it. With lines around the corner, we might need a guest list. Eggs is stage left, the sandwiches taste fresh. A little cube of fish from a clown is basic. Say less, this argument is baseless. Drowned in tartar, that filet fish is tasteless. See, Arby's only deals in the greatness. I bet the house on it like it's Vegas. Look. I could sell water to a well. How could you ever think God fell? Yeah, the crispy fish sandwich blazing trails. The mother clown's just too frail. Yeah, if you know me and you know me well, all fish is gonna tip that scale. All right. Uh, that is from Pusha T. Sorry. Right. I gotta tell the boy. I'm, I'm using the new software tonight, my bad. 
What? <laughs> you clearly, yeah. Man, I told you I software. ran in here, didn't know what I was doing. Here we go. No, I, it's clear. No, I got you. Uh, so that song is from Pusha T. He's a well-respected rapper from the Clips who are most noted about their raps about cocaine. Oh. So that's nice. Um, he also wrote, interesting fact, the McDonald's I'm Loving It jingle. What? Um, sung by Timberlake. Yeah, he wrote it. Mm. Uh, here's, the, here's the issue, though. Tim, Timberlake. I, like, I don't the, know. like JT, that that one? I don't, I don't know. Or is that a, or like the Boots? Like, or is it I think it's Timberland? I, yeah. See, oh, I don't, I don't oh Timberland. Yeah. 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 Uh, but he got paid, uh, Pusha T got paid a flat fee and no residuals. So he has beef with McDonald's mm. and, uh, has, okay. has now wrote the diss track fish track for Arby's. So right. I thought that was interesting. He, so that's going to be our intro music yeah. for, for this, uh, this round last year, <clears throat> the, you know, the chicken sandwich was going off huge. Everybody was getting their new chicken sandwich. We had ourselves a bracket, a bracket extraordinaire mm-hmm. of all the chicken sandwiches. Um, I don't think I've had like three chicken sandwiches since then. What? Um, yeah. I mean, it, it really, it really got me. I've had lots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of though, I will say the, the Zaxby's has up their game sandwich their chicken sandwich and now it's adding bacon cheese to it which might make me go back for that <clears throat> wait zaxby's adding bacon to their mm-hmm. uh, yeah well i won't yeah. knock it till i try it <laughs> well it is lent Tomorrow. season and you know once once a oh a year i usually get a hankering for a fish sandwich and i say to myself self let's go get to the mcdonald's fish sandwich which I immediately take a bite of, and I regret that decision, but I mm. choke it down anyway. Uh, but, oh, no, it's Lent season, so let's have ourselves a bracket. So we are doing fish sandwich brackets. Producer Brian, can you bring up our fish sandwich bracket here? Brought to you by Red Hill Brewing. Next week, we'll be sipping on a nice Red Hill Brewing, uh, a nice Red Hill Brew, as we choke down our fish sandwich. Um, after you have your fish sandwich, go to Red Hill Brewing. And get yourself a nice beverage to finish that. <laughs> All right. Ooh, did you already post the winner? No. Do you see? What, there's no put winner on here. Okay. We don't know. I don't know what the winner is. I have an idea what it's going to be, but. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Uh, so, Magic Man the seat, is the out. seating for a second. Yeah, Magic Man's. Uh... He's allergic to fish sandwiches, which after we do all six of these, I may become allergic to them as well. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about the seating, yes. Yeah, let's do the seating. So, essentially, the way I approached the seating was, so, originally we had eight possible mm-hmm. fish sandwiches, yeah. and there's more out there. So, we didn't go to, there's like, Captain more. D's or Long John's or, you know, because, of the course, fish the fish place. place. Well, it's, anyway, it's less interesting, right? These are places that almost, most of them almost don't have, always have fish sandwiches, right? So the right. seating I based on the what I th- thought the best ones were, which is kind of what I guess the NCAA mm-hmm. does, so who they think the best teams right. are getting sure. seated number one, whether it's true or not. Yeah. Right. Um, they just go, these guys probably have a good chance, right? So, so first number one, I said Bojangles because it's a really good sandwich. I've had it a bunch of times. Uh, the second seat is Arby's. I, you know, okay. This is right. what That's I fair. think is going to happen. Third is Popeyes, yeah. which is. Who knows? Because it has to be better than these next three, right? Uh, four was originally Wendy's, but they've been disqualified. So Hardy's right. has taken their spot into the four seed, which is a big jump, I guess, if you've been disqualified. Uh, f- five seed is Burger King. And number six, not to be left out, is McDonald's. The year mm. round. You have to bring sandwich. in the classic. Yep. Yeah. So uh, this week yeah. we're doing Burger King versus Hardee's. Oh, yeah. So let me read you the said description of the fish sandwiches, and then you tell me, uh, well, I mean, we'll tell you kind of what we thought that they were. <laughs> and uh, let me pull this up. Do, 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 do. So uh, the BK fish sandwich is a premium fish sandwich with 100% white Alaskan pollock. 
breaded with crispy panko breading and topped with our sweet tartar sauce. Again, for Magic Man, the tangy pickles mm. and all on top of a toasted brioche style bun. All right. So that sounds mm. very lovely. Yeah. The the Hardee's, um, they need some help on their marketing. Fish sandwich. <laughs> Uh, featuring a panko breaded pollock filet with shredded lettuce, a creamy tartar sauce served on a toasted bun. The end. Mm. Uh, there was not much pizzazz put into that. One. So there was, there's two different fish sandwiches on the Hardee's advertising. There are. Yeah. I was only able to get the regular, and there is mm. a beer battered version. That uh, that was not available at That'd be great. my local parties. That sounds amazing, right? You would think, yeah. Well, yeah, it sounds. I mean, because if you had like fish and chips, that's what comes to mind is like English style fish and chips, which right. is a beer batter, you know, crispy Absolutely. and um, similar. I guess what you would get which, from like a Long John Silver's almost, but but it has that other extra flavor to it. I, I think the only one in our bracket that has beer battered is, is Arby's. I could be wrong. Mm. Um, all right. So how do we want to do this, Producer Brian? Which one do we want? Let's start with the, the low seed. I think it's the, the right. Talk about first. Yeah. Let's go with the Burger King. Cool. All right. So my experience, I picked up the Burger King yesterday. Uh, it was about a, ooh, maybe a, seven and a half minute drive to my house, which I, I did have to wrestle in a two year old, uh, single handedly. So that took a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. However, I do, I did pick up for her, the chicken, uh, chicken, uh, what are they like the chicken fries? I got her some chicken fries. Genius move on my part, by the way. (laughs) Because I could give her one. It was small. She could mm-hmm. eat it. Just gnaw yep. on it. It was perfect. So uh, got her some chicken fries. We went upstairs. Got her in the in the seat. Probably total at this point. We're looking about twelve minutes in from when I received it, <clears throat> mm. and then quickly looked at it, took a picture, and then started to eat. I didn't want it to go too bad. Sure. Uh, the to me uh, the panko on there was really really soggy like there was no crisp to it at all uh there was no shredded lettuce it was just a big clump the tartar sauce was good the brioche bun was it looked pretty uh but i I didn't get that super sweetness that that i would normally with a with a brioche sure and it did uh to be fair it said a brioche style bun (laughs) so maybe it's just supposed to look like it (laughs) so that was my (laughs) My experience with the the BK Big uh, Producer Brian, what about you? Well, um, mine took a little longer to get because so I'm going to have a couple of long stories here in another segment, I think. But yesterday, yesterday was Wednesday. Uh, I happened yeah. to be in an area. This all worked out beautifully because there was a I had to go drop something off, and there was a Burger King on the way back. There's not one real close okay. to my house. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Um, so okay. I, I get in the drive through window and just a little backstory The currently the windows don't roll down to my truck. I got to have some stuff worked mm. on. Mm. This makes hey, drive throughs kind of a pain, pain, right? Yep. So I'm, I'm like, first I was going to try to go in the store, but they're locked. The door's locked. They're not, the dining room's not open, which I thought might be different now, but it's not. So I was like, okay, I'm about to get in oh. the drive through line, right? It, the rain, it, it's like someone just dumped yep. the kiddie pool. Like a the god kicked, knocked over his kiddie pool, right? Or something like it's water everywhere. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna Ooh. bail out and drive home and see if I can Ooh. figure something else out. So I'm like driving down the road. I'm going, okay, let me. I, so I, I door dashed my sandwich on my way home. I'm mm. like 20 minutes from home, so it probably took me because <laughs> the, the Burger King's on the other side of town is coming from right. So the 
That was I'm sitting there watching. Oh my gosh. I, I door dash, I get home. It says it's going to be, you know, 25, 30 minutes to get the sandwich, right? And I'm like watching the little uh-huh. thing go across my phone, right? And it says, completing another order after picking up my sandwich. I'm like, Mah. oh no. So this it can't go well, right? Yeah. I also ordered the chicken, which I'll, that's another story. But um, mm. so the, I got my sandwich. It's warm enough, it's not cold. Uh, but the bread, you know, the bread is one of the things I <laughs> okay. remember being one of the better parts of this sandwich. I, this is, I'm not a Burger King fan. That's mm-hmm. well documented. I've literally put my body on the line to eat this sandwich. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> the, I remember the bread being one of the best parts. And I remember the fish being thicker in like 10 years ago, <laughs> last time I had one of these. But it was, okay. it, it's what, in my mind, the what I picture a fast food fish sandwich is supposed to taste like. It's yeah, not great. Okay. It's not terrible. For Burger King, it might be the best thing on the menu for me. Wow. I, I'd go that far. Um, but the, the fish, I think if I'd gotten it hot, it would have been a little better. The fish was a touch chewy for my taste. You know, the bread mm-hmm. wasn't bad. The yeah. lettuce, I didn't like do a CSI investigation on the sandwich. You don't starving. want to do that on a fish sandwich. Yeah, right. No, so don't do it, that. the fish could have been better. I remember it being, it wasn't flaky. It was a little chewy. So, mm-hmm. you know, eh. yeah. it was fine. Uh, I will hand it to them for their chicken fries, though. Those were good. <clears throat> it's, yeah. At least Lila liked them. That's all that matters. All right. <laughs> so there's. <laughs> so there's that. Out of one. Out of uh, one to ten, I'm sorry. Uh, out of one to ten, right for the BK. Uh, that's five. That's a solid five, right in the middle. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm with you on the five. <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of flavor to it either. That's what was frustrating. I was like, eh, it just is. Do you know if Erin yeah. was able to eat any of these sandwiches? Did we get any reports back on her? Uh, I'm texting her at the moment, and okay. she gave me her winner. Okay, um, that'll do. That was fine. Okay, that'll that'll that. be. A, if we need a tiebreaker, we'll go. Okay. To her. If awesome. we need a tiebreaker, we can go to Ryan. <laughs> um, all right. So, there you so go. Wendy's. He's so excited about this. Or, sorry, no, <laughs> Harvey. Oh, yeah, we'll make him. I can't show we'll my pickles this year. Get, <laughs> we'll just have you go get the fish sandwiches. Eat the pickle, and then oh. your allergic react. The tiebreaker will be which one gives you the worst allergic reaction. Oh, that's nice. I look like Will it. Smith. Jeez, that, or, you know, we could just have Lori eat the sandwich. Let's see. You know. uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or the and then all my pickles. The, which one? Oh yeah. boy, that's this is oh. a family show, Ryan. Come on. Yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, we go to Hardy's next. Uh, for me, uh, that that one is much closer to my house. Two two minutes away, I was able to grab it, get home, eat it. Um, quick story on that one: just it was to me, it it had crunch to it. There was some flavor to it. Um, the the tartar sauce was good. It did have just one giant leaf of lettuce, and I'm I hate mm. lettuce. It's just pointless to me um and the bun was was soft that was the other thing is the hardy's bun mm. seemed even though it was brioche it was um dense and this one was at least soft um so for me out of a scale of one to ten i probably would give it a, a six and a half okay um above the bk sandwich but producer brian your thoughts uh well so uh, hardy's there's not one close to here so again you know we, we tried to get wendy's it was unavailable by me I think almost unavailable by you. So, okay, where's the Hardee's? Fortunately, I had to take our, one of our cars to get an inspection, to drop off for inspection tomorrow. Over mm-hmm. in Harrisburg, and there's a Hardee's okay. like right there yeah. in Harrisburg. So, we got the car dropped off. Whole families in the in the truck are riding oh. over there, pulling the parking lot. And there's one car trying to talk to the drive through. I drive mm-hmm. around the building, and there's lights off everywhere. Because the Hardee's is closed, mm. and it is six thirty or six forty no, tonight. 
So I had a Wendy's classic wow. bacon sandwich, <laughs> which was great. <laughs> so <laughs> the uh, Hardee's what did, did, oh, it just didn't no. happen. So maybe I'll get if if it okay. if it moves forward, I will make an attempt to get the sandwich before the next round. If it's the winner, obviously, so we can ju- I can judge it against the next sandwich. But okay. I'm going to have to lean on your score and Aaron's score for this one. Okay. Okay. Um, well, uh, again, I really wanted to hear Aaron's point of view, as, as you said, because she uh, she's never ordered a fish sandwich through a drive through before, which I wanted to know that experience. Um, how, however, she did text me and let me know uh, her favorite. And uh, unfortunately, we are going to have to go to a tiebreaker, producer Brian, because she said BK oh. was her favorite. Really? Ooh. So we we are interlocked at this point. We're at a dead standstill. Magic I mean, man, well, you are going to go pick up those sandwiches, sir, and you're going to have an allergic reaction. I mean, for me, the, obviously the BK was the better sandwich because I didn't get the hearty sandwich. <laughs> so that's one way to look at it. Okay. Is uh, okay. It, that's what I mean, that's we can fair. just we can just that's advance fair. it. They their stores closed or didn't have people. I mean, it didn't look like it was always closed. Like maybe just no one showed up for work tonight, yeah. kind of situation. Is it a, like a did not participate? So they have for you. Uh, I think it's uh, parties. Yeah. that did not participate. I, I okay. think that's what it's looking like. Where they got like a Ooh. ejection or something, right? Or a, 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 a yeah, technical a, a or a technical. Uh, add your basketball. The coach got kicked off the court or something. Yeah. All right. So. Um, this pains me to say, and I think it pains you even more. BK is moving on <laughs> the next round. I'm just glad Ooh. that we decided we're not going to eat these sandwiches multiple times. We're going to use our yeah. judgment. So yep. it's out of the <laughs> yeah, way. We can't, yeah, we can't, <laughs> we can't re-eat it. Though I, I am interested to know at some point if you could go by and get the Hardy's fish sandwich sure. if, you still, if you still think it's better. But uh, all right, so BK happens. is moving on. Mm. Wow. Let's play our upset. Um, our upset music. Oh right. Our yes. Thing. This is when our BK uh, wins. The winner gets this one. Can I buy you a fish sandwich? Congratulations, BK. <clears throat> I did not see that coming. I'll be honest with you. Uh, right. Oh, I think it's funny that Aaron liked it more. She probably had yeah. a fresher experience. She can recap next week. Yeah, no, she can. Uh, we may let's hold off on the the other things and then go to your wacky news since we're we're kind of we're cooking here, huh? Moving right. on here, yeah, yeah, man. We're just going really slow. <laughs> we're taking our time. Um, <laughs> you know, we ain't got what time? I don't even know what time it is. Oh yeah, yeah, we're we're doing great. All right, I've got. You tell me when to stop. Let's put it that way. I found a new fountain Important. of wacky news. That just is overflowing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this I, I is love this. here we go. Lucky it's news ready, brought to you it? by Level Up Logo. Come on. If you need uh, custom branded merchandise, go see. It's at leveluplogo dot com. Correct. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, I sure hope. That's Check the, the show notes. I really <laughs> <laughs> We're sending it to somebody. So right. yeah. So twenty twenty two has been a. Uh, it's been an interesting year. I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening, right? There is um, indeed. It's, it's a you know, weird there's year. For, you know, Delta. What's the cron? Was it Delta or Delta Cron or all these Omicron. different? The you know, there's the Cron COVID stuff, and there's a war, and there was. I feel like stuff just keeps happening. We lost Betty White. You yeah, know, all we're these just things. In March, right? We're just in March. It's March. Yeah, you know, Kentucky lost. All these things just keep piling on, right? Jesus is coming right. back. This year. Well, um, so it's apparently, gotta be. It ha- yep. Now we have to worry about a demon, also. Well, he was holding Ryan's hand down. So. Uh, a magical Japanese boulder that's trapped a demon for a thousand years has cracked open suddenly. Oh, gosh. We're gone. Yep. 
A magical Japanese boulder that has been supposedly holding a demon for a thousand years has suddenly cracked open, presumably, presumably, hard word, releasing said demon into the world. Oh, there's a bunch of uh, Japanese words I can't say. Uh, they call it the killing stone. <laughs> it's believed to contain a powerful demoness called Tamamo no Mai. Mm. Uh, but on March 5th, the boulder cracked open. Oh, uh, well, the prevailing theory is natural weathering. Japanese mythology mm-hmm. points to another conclusion. Legend dictates that the stone is actually the corpse of said demon, um, who was it was fashioned into a holding cell for a spirit during some Japanese no, period, uh, 1603 to 1867. Uh, this spirit was said to possess the concubine of King Zhao. He also, I think, was in China and India. So, bottom line. I really enjoy General Sal. Though. Right? That's delicious. Maybe this demon has something to do with that. I don't know. Is that good Ryan, or bad? was that the one that was holding your arm down? Could very well have been. Yeah, so, great mm. news out of Japan oh, there. Uh-oh. Jesus, come back. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, in more local news. Jesus, come a, quickly. <laughs> a private school <laughs> in Southern California has issued apology after a video surfaced of a preschool teacher leading her students in a chant denouncing President Biden. Oh, no. Yep. Preschool. Oh, no. A video obtained by an ABSC affiliate showed an unidentified teacher at a Christian school in California asking her students who their president is. Who's our president? The teacher asked her students. Biden, the students replied in unison. The teacher then asked, what do we want to do with him? We want him out, the preschool students shouted in unison. (laughs) Yeah. Nonprofit Christian school. It's a pre-K through six. Mm. Uh, obviously, there's been some uh, kerfuffle about the teacher. <laughs> sure. About indoctrinating oh. children. What do you think about that? <laughs> Look, here's the thing. All y'all were upset with Bush when we weren't calling him Mr. President because we, we have to respect the office. All y'all were screaming, respect the office, respect the office. You got to respect the president. Mm-hmm. And now you're all, let's go, Brandon, and mm-hmm. not respecting. Y'all be consistent, you dumb A's. Be consistent. Sick and tired of it. Oh. Right. right. <sighs> so this uh, next article mm. begins with our two of our favorite That's words. Right. Florida okay. man. Not demon possession. No. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Bring it. Uh, Daytona Beach. What is wrong with you down in Florida? What is wrong with you? A Florida man told police officers he was, quote, teaching it a lesson when he tried to throw a live alligator he had stolen from a miniature golf course onto the roof of a beachside cocktail lounge. (laughs) The 32-year-old man. Only in Florida. Was arrested early Thursday uh, when the police spotted him attempting to throw the gator onto the roof of the uh, the bar. They saw him take it by the tail, hit it against the awning of the building, throw it to the ground, and stomp on it twice. He was taken into custody, oh charged with possession and injury of an alligator, unarmed burglary of an occupied dwelling, theft, and criminal mischief. Mm, and please tell me there was some type of like this person's on drugs. Did they do a talk screen on this person? It, it says no. He was only was charged with possession of the alligator. Oh gosh, what, what lesson no. was he trying to teach him? I don't know. He stole it from an enclosure at a nearby miniature golf course. So this is like a pet alligator for the golf course, right? Ooh. It's not even well, like a wild one floating around somewhere. <laughs> It, yeah. yeah. Get you, Gator. Yeah. You know, he probably, he, he, here's, what, here's what I picture it as. He hit, he, you know, he took, he, he took his kids putt-putting, mm-hmm. you know, earlier in the day. 
and uh and you know he he was hit <laughs> he was hitting his ball and then it went on over to the gator cage the gator ate it right okay and he's like yeah. ah stupid gator and then you know he goes home take you know drops his kids off because he only sees them you know once once a once a <laughs> week and he goes back to the <laughs> to, to the cocktail bar and then he's had too many and then he says to himself that sob gator i'm coming after you here's the gator like you're not taking my golf ball anymore gator man and he just like lets him have it and throws him up on the roof that's that's my dream interpretation of that guy yeah that's what happened what i don't know did (laughs) did this ice cream fall off the cone he just got mad i mean what i don't know just couldn't take it can we officially say this this point that Florida is the Trump of America? Can we say that? Like <laughs> you, you look just happened. <laughs> what just happened? What just came out of that thing? Yeah. And it's the same with Trump. Like, what did he just say? Yeah. He did not just call a dictator rocket man. Right. There's no Yep, he did. He did. And it's the same thing with Florida man. Yo. Yeah. Keep it coming, Florida. I got another Florida story for you. If it wasn't for Florida, we'd all, all be normal. Right. Yeah. Okay. It'd be all right. so boring. I, you can't get better than that one. I mean, everyone loves a love story, right? <laughs> he threw the gator on the roof. Uh huh. So Please Nap- tell me this one ends up with her on the roof. Well, Naples police responded to the Hilton Hotel early Sunday morning after reports of a fight between a bride and groom. The fight happened right after their wedding ceremony Saturday night. Okay. According to police, uh, when they arrived, the bride's gown was covered in blood and had a torn strap. uh, What? And the bride was also covered in blood crying. According to Mm. the police or the, the bride, she got into a fight with her new husband over his brother. There's not a lot of context oh, here. Uh, the bride told police she start she started the fight and was the one to blame. And the the dude said the same thing, uh, okay. but he headbutted her and broke her nose and broke his nose. No, she her headbutted nose. him been... and broke his nose. Okay. okay, that makes sense. Both refused medical treatment. There's blood everywhere. Uh, they both admitted fault and they were both arrested. That's a honeymoon in Florida. Um, just asking, just going to ask the two questions. Uh, who knew who, anybody? Uh, can you say that again? You were breaking up. OJ? Is this thing on? I said, who knew OJ got married again? What? All right. I'm, I'm just going to leave that. that no, OJ that. got married again? <laughs> No, I'm saying because it sounded like, you know, oh. some silliness that happened. OJ, I say, no, the guy's OJ, not, not, not his name's Florida. John. It's not yeah. orange juice. Okay. I forget. I don't even know what OJ's real name is. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll move on. That would have been funny if it wasn't for the lag. Um, or- Orenthal James. Oh, trivia. <laughs> Oh man, I really I might I'm gonna save this one for for uh, Aaron because I think it's okay. It, I want right. to get her opinion on it. Uh, let's go. I got one more here. Okay. All right, let's, <laughs> leave, let's end it strong. <laughs> uh, all right, a Florida man. Again, I found the. <laughs> A great site here. A Florida man called in the cops to make sure the meth in his possession was really meth. What is this, FloridaMan.com? Yeah, it's close. Predictably, he was arrested for being in possession of said drug. The man had been worried well, that he good. had actually been duped into buying bath salts mm-hmm. masquerading as meth. Now, of course, he has a far greater reason for worry because hmm. um, he got arrested. So he, he called the cops and told them he had sure. met uh, a dealer at a lo- local bar, and he was an experienced drug user, so that he knew what he should have felt. So he used the product, and it, I guess it wasn't meet his standards. So he gave the cops mm-hmm. his address and asked them to come over. 
quote, okay. as requested, a deputy performed a field test on a sample of the white crystal-like substance from each of the baggies. The substance for both baggies tested positive for methamphetamine. Um, so he, the student called the police to check his drugs for him. Hmm. The uh, sheriff's uh, department has said news, the next that, he was put on. Oh. Sorry, the sheriff's office has uh, basically said if you or someone you know have doubts about the authenticity of any illegal narcotics you have in, on hand or have obtained from another person, the sheriff's office is pleased to provide this service free of charge. Hmm. That's nice of them. Yeah, isn't it? Community service. Yeah. In, in related news, uh, said man was put on bail and then threw an alligator on top of a roof. <laughs> <laughs> That's entirely possible. Uh, bond was seven thousand dollars. So, I mean, how about you? All yeah. right, guys. Well, That's thank you so news. much for tuning <laughs> tuning into the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. Next week for our fish uh, bracket, our fish sandwich bracket, brought to you by Red Hill. Uh, who are we voting on next week? Who do we got going? We have uh, National Chain Bar- McDonald's, it's McDonald's, cool. and Popeyes. So, well, can we just tell you the winner at this point? We'll just tell you. <laughs> I'm not even gonna have to buy the sandwich. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, Popeyes is a mixed bag. You don't know what kind of what you're gonna end up with. I think you know it's quality is inconsistent. Yeah, best. but basically, if I poop on a piece of bread, it'll be fine. Yeah, that's called the chicken. All right, guys. Um, just a little score. <laughs> <laughs> We'll talk about the king next week when we're not in for tuning into the Southern Fried Philosophy <laughs> podcast. And as always, keep looking up.